Welcome back to the Daily Dollar Podcast. This is Acronym Week. I am your host, Kate McCready, and I am here with... Arthur Morrison the Third. What? What else? Is, like, what's your middle name? I knew you were going to go there. As soon as I uttered Arthur instead of Art, yeah. I knew you were going to fish. You couldn't just let me have that glory. No, let's go. If you're, I mean, if you're going to go My hard, My dad go used hard. to put a deep voice on him because he's the, he's the sec, he's junior, obviously. Oh, okay. And he would say... Arthur George Morrison III, but in a really, in a deep voice. Was that like when you were in trouble? No, it was just when he wanted to summon me in a medieval way. In a, in a medieval... The third is kind of medieval. Well, you know what I mean. The fourth is even more medieval. You know what else is medieval? What? Real estate. Oh, good Real segue. Medieval. Yeah, I, I try. We are talking about ROI. Roy. Rookie of the year. Talking about... Roy, ROI. Yes. What does ROI even stand for, bruh? Return on investment. Return on investment. ROI is literally like... Dramatic pause. Yeah, I'm trying to... I had a definition, <laughs> but I don't, I don't like it. I don't want to confuse people. But yes, ROI is return on investment. It's, it's like the interest that an asset is paying you. Okay. And ROI is very important. I mean, the, the definition is explained in the acronym, as mm -hmm. most acronyms, right? ROI. But return on investment is really important in real estate because you always want to make sure that your money is growing because we are not in the business of buying real estate like collectors. Right. Right. We are buying real estate as investors. And as an investor, it's important that we're always achieving a positive ROI or return on our investment. So what would you say is a good ROI? 15%. 15 is like good. Yeah. Average ROI on an investment is like eight to 12 and a half percent is like, that's what you'd get from like a 401k, mutual fund, IRA. Like those numbers are like, you're not going to be pissed. If you invest in a stock and it grows at that rate, like you're, you're pretty solid. Mm -hmm. um, but in real estate. But every, everything has its own, like what is a good ROI? Yeah. You know? So real estate, I, I like 15%. We try to stay above 15%. Yeah. I mean, that's on, that's on flips. What about yeah. on like rentals on the year? Is that like cap rate? Kind of similar, kind of, but it's a little different. Um, ROI, I mean, yeah, so if, to your definition, yeah. Of cap rate, 8%? Uh, yeah, yep. So, I mean, because it's a long-term asset, right? So, right. if I'm doing a buy and hold, I don't need it as aggressive of an ROI. Mm -hmm. If my money's growing at, let's say, 10%, 8 to 10%, but I like 10 better. If your money's growing at 10% annually, like, that's pretty solid. That means if you got a million dollars, that means you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year yeah so all of your money is made back in 10 years and everything after that is is profit but i say i say it's different for everyone because i know i was talking to somebody who was in commercial real estate and i said something like yeah we try to keep a cap rate of eight percent or higher and they like their jaw dropped they're like that's so good but like yeah. in commercial real estate it can be a little lower than yeah that. absolutely and yeah. cap rates like a whole different episode it's, it's another form of your return but from an ROI perspective, um, here's how you calculate ROI, which is like, I'm sure if you tuned into this episode, Good. what you want to know. That was my next question. Uh, so ROI is literally, if you guys want to write this down, yeah. we'll pin this moment in time. Take a screenshot. Of <laughs> Whatever, the, uh... right. No, so <laughs> ROI is your um, profits, aka like, I mean, you guys know what profits is. I don't have to define profits, right? It's your profit divided by your all-in cost, okay? So I'll give you the profit formula. So profits is obviously, um, you know, your revenue minus your expenses. That's profits. So gross minus. We'll just say revenue. I won't okay. say gross or net because you could, it gets confusing. Profits, the definition of profits is revenue minus expenses. So if I made 100,000, but it cost me 50,000, um, then I'm going to make 50,000. That's my profit. Now, my all-in cost are those expenses, right? And that's that $50,000 that I just talked about in my example. So what you're going to do is you're going to take those profits and you're going to divide them by your all-in cost. Typically, your profits are lower than your all-in cost, meaning if a house cost me $200,000 and I sold it for $300,000, that means I've made $100,000. So I'm dividing $100,000 by $200,000 and that would give me what, a 50% ROI? Mm hmm 50% ROI. Now, when it I do... It would give you 0.5. I was getting there. So you multiply It would give that. you a decimal of 0.5, and then you multiply that times 100, 
um, which is going to give you a percent. And that percent is usually how ROI is represented. It's not usually represented as a decimal. It's represented as a percentage, just like interest is, right, or an interest rate, which is why I made that com comparison in the beginning. But you're going to do profits divided by all in times 100, and that will give you an ROI. So how does that tie into our other acronyms? Um, I'd like to tie in our, our acronym week all together. Yeah, I mean, like FH, yeah. FHA, I mean, it, it doesn't really tie in on the ones we did. We did ARV, Well, CMA. ARV it does, right? Yeah, so your, yes. your ARV is how you would anticipate profits, right. meaning like if I calculate the ARV and it's 300, then that allows me to calculate the ROI without having to sell it, right? Because there's two times I'm going to want to know my ROI. And the most important one is before I do the damn deal. You don't want to do a whole flip blind, and then at the end, you're like, oh, my ROI was only 4%. It wasn't a good flip. You know it's a good flip in the beginning if you know how to calculate ARV, and you know the after repair value even before the repairs occur, and you can calculate ROI, and you have your threshold. So what's our thresholds on ROI? 15%. 15% is or good, higher. but what's, we have a whole, a whole thing. 15% is good. 20% is great, Oh, 25% yeah, is a, a home, home run, run. Yeah. right? So anything over 25% is like, give me that, that's all day. So We haven't used that scale in a while. <laughs> Threw me off guard. I mean, it's the scale, what you mean? Yeah, we haven't talked about it in a minute. We buy but, houses every day, we definitely <laughs> use it. You maybe don't use it. No, I do, because I have to calculate the ROI when I am yeah, so what are you talking about? looking you and finding it. homes. Well, I mean, okay, when we talk about it, like, it's okay. Look at the good, camera. great, and home run. Look at run. the camera and just say, I forgot it. No, it's okay. I didn't Accountability. forget it. Say, I forgot it for a second. Not, we don't use it. I didn't say we didn't use it. You just said we haven't used it in a while. That's your exact words. We don't make me rewind it. We haven't had that discussion in a while. Okay, so it's different. Okay, she forgot. I didn't forget. He likes to play with words, but that's okay. But an ROI is an easy way to kind of sum up whether, like, okay, so when you're projecting a deal and you're uh, presenting it to an investor, it's a great and easy way to say this is what the R R R <laughs> this is what the ROI would be on this deal. Yeah. It's a super easy first glance look at what a deal would be and if somebody right off the bat is going to want to invest or not. Yeah, absolutely. So if I come to you with all these fancy numbers on a sheet and at mm -hmm. the bottom it says ROI and it's circled and it says 4%, you're like, all right, bro. I'm, you don't have I'm, to read the other numbers. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, like the ROI is definitely the most important number. If you see a 30% ROI, it's like, all right, the last time I seen 30% was never, but the last time I seen ROI was on my mutual fund, my 401k, mm -hmm. right? My, the bank, uh, what, what interest they're gonna be giving me in my savings account, and it's never 30%, so I know this is good. Right. Not to mention, like 30% of anything is always good. It's like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, like yeah. the higher that number, the, the, the stronger it is, even if like a kid would know 30% ROI is better than 5% ROI. Yeah. Um, so it's a very simple formula, a simple way of calculating whether a deal is a good deal or not. Yeah. Probably the most used formula, despite what Kate tells you guys. I'm not saying we don't use ROI. I'm saying the Kate scale thinks of ROI is an good, important. great, and home run with the numbers associated. Yeah, 15, we just 20, 25. We don't like being below 15%, yeah. right? But once we start creeping at 20, we know like this is a definite purchase. And once we start hitting 25%, we're like, okay, this is this is something to be excited about. We can book a trip to Cabo after this. You know what I mean? Like this, yes. after this flip, if everything goes according to plan and according to projection, this is a good deal. 25% is a home run. So. Knowing how to calculate your ROI, you can calculate ROI. Like this is a real estate podcast. We're talking about flips and flipping houses and whatever. But you can calculate ROI on pretty much anything. My favorite example is a case of waters. Mm -hmm. People don't understand the power of selling water selling on the water. street. Extreme ROI. Water at Costco is what? Let's say five dollars mm -hmm. for thirty-five waters. Mm -hmm. If you sell every water for a dollar, mm -hmm. which is low these days, that's thirty-five dollars. Minus the five you spent, that's $30 profit, right? So now you do 30 divided by five, which gives you six times 100. That's a 600% ROI. We just said that 25% is a home run. 600% is like... So forget real estate, start selling water. Start selling water right now. <laughs> just kidding. Don't do that. I mean, hey, if you, that's what you want to do. I am not buying water off of somebody on the street. What? You never know. You're not what from they the hood, bro. You don't, people don't put stuff in water. They just trying to make some money. <clears throat> yeah. Whatever. Shout out to the water boys. <laughs> Shout out to the water boys. I be selling water. 
Philly, Baltimore, all the inner cities, man, selling water to make a living. But no, water's a great ROI, obviously, but bigger than that, I mean, um, let's say if you're a corner store or a restaurant. Yeah. They all sell water or drinks. Yo, you and that fly. I got it. I got the fly. Yo, I would put the camera. I got the fly on acronym week. Make oh, sure. no, he's on the floor. He's not. Okay, kill him. Kill him. No. Kate. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Yo, go grab my sandal. Guys, this is episode 29 of The Daily Dollar. There's been a fly flying around for three episodes, like in the Breaking Bad episode. Thank you. She's getting my chancleta, my yeah, size 15 joint, too. I don't think he got him. Oh. Got his ass. Anyway, Daily Dollar, episode 29. Art Morrison the third here. Kate McCready here. UnitedHomeRelief.com. Check out all the other episodes as well as our real estate roadmap where you can learn real estate strategies. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Anywhere else you listen to podcasts too. We're all over the place. Yeah. All right. So um, leave us a review. Yeah. Leave a review. Five star review. Send us topics. All yes. that. All right, Art Morrison III here signing off. Kate McCready here. Catch you guys on the next episode. Peace. Another day, another dollar.